Hey everybody, so thanks for submitting your questions for my Q&A. I wanted to give you guys enough time to submit questions and give myself enough time to sort through all the questions, so that explains the delay, so sorry I wasn't able to get this video out sooner, but I wanted to give myself enough time to think about what I was going to say, because I got so many awesome questions. So uh, let's start this Q&A. There's quite a few questions. So I may have to split this up or I'm just going to make a really long video, so I apologize if, for how long this is about to be. Um, the first question that I have is, what moment or game got you into gaming? Um, I can't really think of a time where I wasn't gaming and just started gaming, if that makes any sense. Um, my family is just really big into gaming. I have... You know, me and my siblings I used to always play games growing up. I have an older sister and an older brother. One, my older sister's 28, my older brother's 26, I believe, and my younger sister's 17. And we used to always play games growing up together. My sister kind of grew out of it, but my older sister. But me and my older brother and my younger sister still play games a lot. And it's just, I, it's just what I did growing up. Like, that's what we did together. So, um... I can't really think of a time where I just started. I mean, my, some of my earliest memories of gaming were were when I was really, really young, and me and my siblings would play Mario and Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong was my favorite. I've never been, like, a crazy Mario fan. I do love Luigi's Mansion, but I, I was always a big Donkey Kong fan, and I loved that game as a kid. We also played Street Fighter, um... And I just, I love that game too. You know, it, it, just growing up, it was just so much a part of, you know, my life. So I, I can't really think of a time where there wasn't gaming in my life because, you know, I grew up with, you know, my older brother playing games and, um, just playing games with them. So, um, what was the first game you remember being addicted to? Honestly, when it came to games, I, um, well, it's important to know, my parents had a very laissez-faire approach to parenting, if I might put it that way, so they didn't really enforce who got to use the console, um, who got to use, like, the Nintendo and the PlayStation, so whenever it was open, my brother was usually playing it, because he was the biggest and strongest, so <laughs> he <laughs> got the console, you know what I'm saying? So... Whenever he wasn't around, I, I would either play with him and play with my siblings, or I would just play when he wasn't around. But so it was hard to get my hands on gaming and on games. But when I did, it was just so special, and I just got addicted to anything that I could get my hands on um, to play. Some of the first games that I really remember being addicted to was, like I said, um, you know, uh, uh, Street Fighter and Donkey Kong. Um, those are the games that I was really addicted to when I was really, really little. Um, I, uh, what else did I, oh, Shenmue. That was, like, one of my favorite games when I was a little kid. I got my first console that actually belonged to me when I was in 6th or 7th grade. I finally asked for my own Xbox, and my parents gave it to me for, like, my birthday, and... Um, I just, once I had my own Xbox, I would just sit for hours and hours and hours. The first game that I had for my Xbox was uh, Shenmue. And, you know, obviously I didn't have the Xbox right when it came out like I, my brother did, but I got it, um, got my own Xbox once, once it was like my, I feel like it was like my 11th or 12th birthday or I don't know. But um, I remember <laughs> it was like the Super Bowl and my birthday is on Super Bowl weekend every single year um, pretty much like it, if, if you don't know what the Super Bowl is if you're from a different country than America um, I'm pretty sure you probably know what it is but as you know football is pretty big here um, and not football as in like you know the round ball they kick around but everyone calls soccer football everywhere else we call that soccer but uh, you know you probably already know that but like football the Super Bowl is like the biggest um, pro football game of the year and everyone watches it except for me because I have a grudge against this because it's on my birthday I'm usually playing games during that time or or I'm just at a, at a Super Bowl party but it just makes me mad that they always have all the restaurants closed and everything during my birthday it's just like 
uh, so I remember I, it was Super Bowl weekend, and I was playing Shenmue, and I was just playing nonstop, and now my parents were like, oh, come on, we're watching the Super Bowl, like, you're supposed to be with your family, and I'm just like, no, I'm playing Shenmue, that game, it, if you don't know Shenmue, it's like, it's like a heavy rain type game, um, it's, it's very story based and it had kind of like interactive cutscenes at, at parts. Now that I think about it, now that I've seen clips from it, it seems kind of silly to me now because I realize how bad the voice acting was and stuff, but the open world atmosphere and everything is what I really enjoyed about the game and man, I could just sit and play that game for hours and hours and I did play that game for hours and hours. Also. Um, my parents got me a Game Boy, like the first Game Boy, the like big one that you like slide the games into. Um, I had that, I think when I was way younger than that, maybe like eight or something. Um, I, but I would play the Pokemon game, the early Pokemon game on the Game Boy and, uh, like the the turn-based game. That game was so fun. I mean, I could just play that for hours and hours and hours. Not only because, like, Pokemon's awesome. And, I mean, everyone loved Pokemon as a kid. But I I love the turn-based, you know, Final Fantasy-type gameplay. And, uh, man, I, I would play that for hours and hours. Um, the next question is, what really got you into gaming? And what game have you had the best memories about? So I already an answered the first question. The second one... Um, what games do you have the best memories about? Well, all that I explained, all the games that I explained before, but also one game that I remember playing was this game called Myst. It's like this point and click um, puzzle game, and I, I hope that at least most of you played it. If you haven't played it, you can download it from the PlayStation po the, the PlayStation Network store. I, I'm going to go through and play all of them again because I realized that it's on the PlayStation Network and I was like, yes, I'm going to go play them all again and I was just a nostalgia city. I'm just like, um, and, and I don't have a great memory of how the puzzles worked because I was so young when it when I played it. So it's like I'm playing it fresh all over again. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's like this very steampunky world, like this uh, kind of old school, maybe, world but with awesome technology and you have to like go in these rooms and, and click things to solve puzzles and there's just so many things so many puzzles and so many things to do I mean it's very quiet um you don't really interact with people sometimes there's cutscenes with people but um it's just like this very quiet mysterious game and I just I uh, just I had some of the best memories playing that as a kid what else? Shenmue, Pokemon, uh, Final Fantasy X. That is still one of my favorite games. You no, know, Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VIII was the first game that I played, but when I played Final Fantasy X, it just, I don't know, like the graphics were just more, like more gorgeous than anything I had ever experienced, honestly. Like it still impresses me. The graphics still impress me and it's quite a few years old. Um, not only just the look of it, but the music, the the way it started, the actual like start cutscene um, was just incredible. It just had me from the beginning, and I love turn-based gameplay. I still do. It's just so much fun. Um, it's so nostalgic for me. Um, yeah, but I think that uh, what g game got you playing into RPGs? That's the next question. Final Fantasy X, Final Fantasy VIII. Um, played those. I think I played those when I was like eleven or twelve. And when I, when I played that, it just something clicked. It was just, I mean, although I enjoyed games that I played before, it, I realized that this was the type of game that I like to play, even though now if I played a game like Final Fantasy, it wouldn't seem as much like an RPG to me. Because when I think of RPG now, I think of interactive story more than like leveling up and that type of gameplay. Um, you know, because you don't really get that many choices story-wise throughout Final Fantasy games. Um, you do in some, but not drastic choices. So, um, but, but, but when I played Final Fantasy, it just amazed me that there was a type of game that you could actually experience, that you could walk into and experience. Because I was always a very daydreamy type kid, like, and I still am a very daydreamy person. Like, when, I, when I'm when i sitting and, like, going, and you know I'm, I'm, like, thinking of something else. You know, some people daydream 
and they daydream about their future or they daydream about stuff that they wish is happening in their own lives. When I daydream, I daydream about worlds that don't exist and characters that don't exist. Like, I still daydream like that. Like, I have these whole worlds that I don't know what to do with and these characters, um, you know, well, I that's why I started writing, <laughs> obviously. But these, you know, these characters and these worlds that I, I, it's hard for me to explain to people, and when I experienced an RPG, it was like I was walking into someone's world, like I was walking into someone's imagination, and I've always wanted someone to be able to walk through my brain, because my brain is so strange, you know, like, as I said, I have these worlds and stuff, but, um, I get to walk through someone else's imagination, and, like, that is the best, that is, like, the biggest flattery for a writer or an artist for you to actually be able to interact with their art on a physical level to some extent. Uh, that, I mean, that's why I fell in love with it. I was like, you know, I'm always looking for... If, if, forgive me if I'm if for using this word, but art forms. And I do believe gaming, gaming is an art form. It's not something you hang in a gallery, obviously. It's something that you're you create for the player to be immersed in, to enjoy. It's a form of entertainment like film obviously um but you know I'm always looking for new art forms to kind of connect with because I'm a very artistic person and I just see um you know like I as I said I'm always trying to create things in my head and I always have to find ways to put those things and like explain what's going on in my head to people and so I found I found that RPGs in particular, games, but RPGs in particular, are really concerned with taking those ideas that we artistic people have in our brain and and conveying them to the rest of the world, which is a very difficult thing for us people to, like, for artistic people to do, but it's something we need to do, and I just, as soon as I started playing RPGs, I was like, this is, you know, this is someone's outlet. In, in a, you know, not necessarily a personal outlet because it's it's something many people work on. I mean, sometimes it's one person creating a game when it comes to indie games, but um, not even, you know, most indie games are created by several people or, you know, two people at least. So, um, you know, it's not so much personal expression, but it's a way people create. I think that's what I mean. It's a way people create and there's more... There's more creativity in games. I'm going to argue this, and I'm going to continue to argue this forever. There's more creativity happening in games than any other medium right now. And music, of course, um, and art. But but I'm compared to movies and compared to even music yeah, at times, like, there's a lack of originality these days, especially in movies. And... Um, at least games are trying to do something different. They have original... They're They're... Some of the only things that have original storylines to some extent, you know, like all of these games back here, I mean, except for Batman, ugh, I can't, okay, there, have an original concept. All of my favorite games typically have an original concept and original writing and original characters, and you rarely see that in any other art form these days or any other medium these days, I should say. But, um, yeah, I I spent way too much time on that question. This is already, like, 15 minutes. Oh, my gosh. Anyways, okay, what is nostalgic for you personally? I think I explained that pretty much, like, with my favorite games. Also, game soundtracks or soundtracks in general are very nostalgic for me. Um, I like collecting things. I like collecting... I have a ton of photo albums. Um, I like doing that. I like scrapbooking. I... I, um, I'm, I hoard things. I, <laughs> I'm bad at that. I have, like, chests of old diaries and stuff in my parents' house. It's really bad. I need to, like, just get rid of stuff. I don't think I'm gonna get rid of my diaries, but I have, like, I just love collecting memories and collecting things, so anything semi-reminiscent of the past, I will try to collect. Um, what would be your dream job in gaming? Character and dialogue writer. That is my dream job. Whether or not I think I'm going to do it is another thing. Um, I mean, that's not what I'm, like, going to pursue completely. Because the thing about 
writing in games is it's very, very difficult to get a job writing in games. You kind of have to have at least some experience or some, like, you have to have your name out there to do anything in writing. So, um, you know, I mean, I, my, my, um, like, experience in writing is mostly with dialogue. That's what I'm, uh, you know, that's what I'm good at. That's what most people that have read my writing say I'm good at. I don't plan on writing a novel one day. Maybe I will, but um, I've written a couple plays and they've been performed at like my old high school and stuff. So that's what I enjoy doing. Um, whether or not I'm just going to do, I don't know. That's like not what I'm pursuing, but if it was like a personal project or maybe like an independent project, that would be what I'm aiming for first. But yeah, I, I don't know if I'll ever write dialogue for games, but that would be a really cool thing to do. Um, what are your top five favorite video games in this current generation? So not like old games, but games that have been released fairly recently. Um, I'm going to be really bad about sticking to the numbers. So <laughs> like top five, I'm not going to put five, but um, my favorite game of all time, of course, Mass Effect. I love Mass Effect. Um, Fallout. I'm a big Fallout fan. I just love the survival aspect of it, and I just love, I, I just love the 40s and 50s. I love the music. I love the um, ambience about it. That's just my favorite atmosphere to be walking through, honestly. Um, Bioshock, Skyrim, Deus Ex Human Revolution, Batman Arkham Asylum. Um, so that's not five, but those are games that I can play over and over and over again, and those are the games that I enjoy the most in this current generation. So what is your favorite Batman Arkham City character? Um, obviously Joker. Like, they got the, the guy that voices Joker was the voice for Batman the Animated Series, and that was like one of my favorite shows growing up, so the fact that they got both Batman and Joker, the guys that vo voiced Batman and Joker, voiced those characters in the animated series, and so when I heard those voices, I was like, oh my gosh, that's Joker, that's Batman, like, that's how, that's how I picture the Joker, and fun fact, the guy that plays the Joker is Luke Skywalker in, um, uh, in Star Wars, I had no idea, like, I was like, what, Luke Skywalker is the Joker, that's crazy, but yeah, he's just so good, he's so animated, like, he just had, like, the voice acting is great, and I just love that kooky, f kind of funny Joker character. I mean, still dark, but not as dark as, say, the movies or Heath Ledger's interpretation, but yeah, I just, I love the Joker. I also loved Mr. Freeze in Arkham City. Um, I, I just, I liked that they made him deep, and that they made him dynamic, and he wasn't just this, like, I don't know, Arnold Schwarzenegger like, what, that, that has kind of ruined a lot of people's perception of Mr. Freeze. Like, Mr. Freeze is, like, this kooky character that tells really bad jokes to a lot of people, but, um, I like that he had emotional depth in this game. Um, what question am I, am I on? Okay. Do you mainly play single-player games, or do you also play multiplayer games like Halo and Gears of War? Um, I mostly play single player. I'll play multiplayer. I'll play like co-op with my friends, but I don't really enjoy playing online as much. Um, I play a lot of Mass Effect online. I play that like all the time and anytime there's a big, um, operation or something, I usually go all out, but, um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not crazy into multiplayer just because it's not as People just get, like, really competitive and kind of ruin it. I like playing a game because I enjoy it. I, and I do get really competitive sometimes, but, like, when there's just... When you're playing online and there's just a lot of trolling and just people being stupid. And, you know, at least when I play with my friends, if they're being a little stupid, like, I can forgive that. But even in Mass Effect multiplayer, like, it's just really annoying because sometimes people... there's. There's people playing. Okay, this is the thing I hate about Mass Effect multiplayer in general. Like, this is the thing I hate about multiplayer in general. Is people will play on levels that they can't handle. And the whole team kind of suffers for it. Like, in Mass Effect, for example. It, I can't even play on Silver at all. I love playing on Silver. 
um, difficulty. That's like my favorite one to play on. I don't, I don't bother with gold because I always die. But, um, you know, the thing about silver, you know, or any of the difficulties that are not bronze is no one knows what the heck they're doing. And like everyone dies every five seconds and you have to revive them every five seconds. And it's just like, I can't revive people every five seconds. If you don't know what you're doing, play on bronze and figure out what you're doing before you play on silver. It's just like, and I don't even connect my remote because I'm just like yelling at these people and it's just, sometimes I don't even revive them because it's like, if you're going to die every five seconds, like you don't, I'm just, I'm done with this. So <laughs> that's, that's the only thing about multiplayer with people you don't know is, you know, just people being stupid. Um, and, and I have to be fairly familiar. Like, I don't want to be that, obviously you have to get used to a game, but like, I don't like being that stupid person that has no idea what they're doing if it's a game that I'm not familiar with, you know? Like, if I'm really familiar with it, then yeah. So, um, wait, okay. Favorite video game villain and enemy or enemy? Uh... Enemy-wise, I think the liquor from Resident Evil 2. Um, that thing still scares the crap out of me. I remember the first time I played it. There's this one room that you unlock in Resident Evil 2. And you go into it and there's like this mirror across the room. Like it's just this mirror. And I didn't really think about it. It's like a two-sided mirror kind of thing for like an interrogation room and in in the because it's a police uh, it's a police um headquarters or whatever, whatever I'm trying to say but anyways you walk into this room and you pick up yeah like I picked up a couple of things and then I walked out and then I realized I forgot some something in the room so I go back in the room pick it up and all of a sudden this liquor jumps through the glass and I flipped out this was two in the morning and I screamed at the top of my lungs like it I and and even when I played the game again like I'm playing Resident Evil 2 again I still flipped out even though I knew it was gonna happen like it still scares me so yeah the liquor is definitely one of the most intimidating enemies <laughs> just because it's freaky um and my favorite villain is Sin from Final Fantasy X. Next question. So I get this question a lot. This question is, will you expand your channel with games or even more games or even Let's Plays? Um, I've had a lot of people tell me that they want to do me to do Let's Plays. I've had some people tell me that they don't want me to do Let's Plays, that it's something that everyone does. Um, I'm not, I would, I, I think it's a great idea. It's a great, you know, new thing to do. Um, it will never be the bulk of my channel, like, you know, I want this to mainly be a review and discussion channel, but if you guys want me to do Let's Plays, I'm totally for it. So this is a question I'm going to ask you. If you're up for Let's Plays, tell me about, like, what you think about it and, you know, what games you'd want me to do. Now the thing is, I don't have the money for a video capture device. I mean, I had an old one for my um, for my PC, but that was like ancient. I now have a Mac, so I need something that's Mac compatible. Um, so, if I do Let's Plays, it won't be any time before December because I'll probably ask for it for Christmas from a relative or something because I just can't afford you know I want to get a really good one the one that I'm looking at is like $180 and it's choosing at HD and it's just great quality I'm not going to pay for a cheap one and give you cheap videos because I want you guys to have great videos you know um someone suggested that I do a kickstarter to do let's plays now I hadn't honestly thought about that um and I and I have been thinking about it a little bit at first I was like no I'd rather buy it on my own but the point it, but the thing is I wouldn't be able to buy it on my own because, you know, every time I play a game, it's a matter of me living on ramen for a week. Like, literally, I have to cut down on grocery money every time I buy a new game. So, um, if, if you guys want to do a Kickstarter, that's cool. Um, but honestly, I don't, I don't care either way, you know, like, I, I would love to do Let's Plays. It'd be a lot of fun, but if I do it, it'll probably be you know, in December, unless you guys are up for that. So, you know, tell me what you think about that. And if you're, 
you know, interested in that, so, because, you know, this isn't just my channel, this is, like, our channel, you know, like, it's, this is for you guys, it's for your entertainment, for your enjoyment, and, you know, I, I want to hear what you have to say about that, I'm, I'm gonna move to the next question, um, what are your hobbies? I love reading, I love writing, um, you know, reading is actually really difficult for me, uh, I have some serious ADD or whatever it is, I don't, um, I think that's fairly obvious. I didn't really notice that growing up, but apparently I have a hard time paying attention, and, um, so reading is, even though I'm an English major, I have a lot of trouble with it, but I do enjoy reading. I enjoy reading poetry, um, transcendentalist poetry. I enjoy reading, you know, philosophical things. I love reading novels, um, you know, writing. I like writing plays and dialogue mostly, but sometimes I'll write short stories and stuff. Um, what other hobbies? I like, I like having really meaningful conversations with people. Like, I don't so much like going to parties and stuff where there's just like tons of people being stupid all the time. So, I mean, I guess I'm not the ideal college student <laughs> in that sense, but I like having, you know, being with a close group of friends and just talking and talking about life and meaningful things, like having meaningful conversations with people rather than like stupid, hey, let's hang out and let's go shoe shopping and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, this is what so-and-so, this is what so-and-so said to so-and-so. And whenever people start talking that, well, I just, I just can't handle that kind of stuff. It's just like, and like when people are in loud, large crowds, they're just like, they just act stupid and get, try to get attention. I used to be that kid in high school and, you know, I don't know. I, I just like, I like having meaningful conversations with people and I like spending my time processing. Um, I need a certain amount of time a day just to contemplate everything that happened through, to me throughout the day and to kind of form evaluations about things. Like my brain, the way it works is I, like, have to find connections between everything that happens to me or, you know, like, that's just how I, I enjoy life. Like, everything that I do, I have to, like, form theories about, form connections about, and that's why I spend so much time, like, even analyzing games because I, um, you know, I think there's this one book, and I don't know if I have it with me, I think my roommate has it, but, um, it's, it's like five strengths or something, and one of them is ideation, and that is like my, it says that that's like my strongest strength, and I think that explains my brain in a nutshell. Like, my brain is the type of brain that always has to find connections. Like, I think of the world as a game of connect the dots. Um, between, behind every large concept, there's a simpler concept that kind of makes it seem more un easy to understand and I'm always trying to find that that thing that can bring something so difficult to understand to like a like a more comprehensible level and I spend way too much time just thinking a day I mean I need that time I need time and silence every day just to think and if I don't get that time I like I'm really grouchy and my like my roommates will know it my friends will know it they'll be like you need to have you spent any time alone today? And I'm like, no, I'm feeling crazy. So yeah, that's something I like to do. I think that's a hobby, I guess. That's just how my brain works. 